It's about to go down. Stop what you're doing because you're now tuned in to the hottest sports show on the planet. You know who it is. You know the Smith Express Sports Show, hosted by yours truly, Christopher C. Smith. Yo, 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 what's poppin'? What's poppin'? It's your boy Smith. We here live on the dopest podcast, the Smith Express Sports Show. Got a super dope co-host, the homie Chaz. What's good, my dude? Yo, 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 what's going on, my guy? How you living? Uh, I'm I'm good. I'm good. I'm good, man. It's been a minute. Glad to have you on the show once again. Man, sports has been Glad crazy. To be here, bro. Uh no yes, problem. They have. No problem, no problem. The first thing we got to address is the elephant in the room, the Justin <laughs> Fields situation. Bro, let's talk about it, bro. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Great. If if you was to grade the trade, what would you grade it personally? Uh, uh, a double F. <laughs> 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 the, the, my, my man gets an F minus. Oh, on the trade, I'm I'm a, I'm gonna go out and say my where I stand on the Justin Fields trade for a number of reasons. I know we're gonna talk about it. Is they they it was we did not get what Justin Fields is truly worth, and I really do believe that the stigmatism that is over him right now, that kind of gray cloud that he's not a good quarterback, it's just simply not true, bro. It's just not true. I agree. I agree. So in your opinion, who won that trade deal, the um, Steelers or the Bears? Hands down, bro. The Steelers robbed us, man. They they, they robbed us blind, man. It's like they they came up at, at gunpoint and said, "Give me your home." <laughs> <laughs> man, hey, the sixth round though, you could at least gave us a second round. Bro, the sixth round is like that. That's 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 the bottom of the barrel, bro. Yeah, for, for just for a starting quarterback, and that's why I feel that that it, it was it was bogus how the Bears did Justin Fields, and I, I really do believe that that the entire NFL now he may not fit everybody's scheme and that's for the organization and the coaches to decide and that's 100% fine but they are trying to make this kid out like he is a garbage quarterback and he is not a garbage quarterback over three years over three years with the Chicago Bears mind you with no weapons he just got DJ Moore but with no weapons with a whole Horrible excuse for an offensive line with what three offensive coordinators that he went through. The man has a career passing yards of 6,600 yards in his first three years as a starting NFL quarterback. Those aren't pushover numbers, especially given the lack of weapons that he had in Chicago. So hands down, bro, Steelers, they they swept us in that trade. That's wild, bro. And like I said, shout out to my homie Ace. He, you know, he 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 pulled me to the side and was like, look at Phil's highlights. And when I tell you Fields was something special. And like you said, like to me, I think it was definitely the offensive line that you know what I'm saying? He was getting sacked crazy. The insanely, bro. Man, like and but I feel like if even if the Bears would have drafted Mahomes, Mahomes would have been in that same situation. Yes. And, it, and it would been looked at the at the same exact way because nobody protected Fields. It was kind of like they was doing it purposely. <laughs> Bro, come on, man. Because let, let's talk about it, man. Because the Bears, as as much of a Bears fan as I am, being from Chicago, and you you know you as well, is the Bears are tough to watch because they disappoint. They do something disappointing year after year uh, after year. year. After year. So. 
if you look at those two players, the two you just mentioned, Patrick Mahomes and Justin Fields, I, I guarantee you, if Patrick Mahomes would have came to Chicago, he would have had the exact same outcome. But yet he went to Kansas City. He went in, under Andy Reid. They built the team. They lifted him up. They gave, don't get me wrong. Patrick Mahomes, phenomenal quarterback, going to go down as one of the greatest of all time in the NFL. But they took care of him in his early years and they didn't dump everything on him on his rookie year because if you remember he sat up under Alex Smith for a short period of time Justin Fields did not the expectation for Justin Fields to come into Chicago just like with any quarterback they the Bears have done it with every quarterback since I can remember is they expect their the whoever they bring in to come in and do the absolute most for them and take them to the championship game and uh, the Super Bowl and it doesn't happen because they either one they bring in mediocre quarterbacks or they bring in um, or they bring in quarterbacks who have potential like a Justin Fields but they don't grow him as a quarterback when you take a man from playing at one level of college ball to going to a professional level the speed of of the game intensifies so you have to give him help you have to give him weapons you need to be able to coach him up and time and time again like you said he was getting sacked he was getting hit in the backfield the uh, defense was in his face on a consistent basis at the at, at the core of everything that kid's morale and confidence is just getting lowered and lowered and lowered game after game after game and you see it in his plays you see I, I truly do feel bad for the kids because I really do believe that he could have been an outstanding quarterback, but we're just going to have to wait to see how the rest of his career progresses. Oh, yeah. Hey, I, you know, and I agree with you 110%. But you know what I'm saying? So, look, in your opinion, as long as you've been watching the Bears, where would you put Justin Fields as far as greatest quarterbacks the Bears ever had? Would you well, keep- I would definitely – my bad, bro. Go ahead. No, no. I'm saying, like, w- w- is he top five? I would give him top five. I would hands down give him top five. And the reason why I would give him top five is because of his versatility. When you think of a Justin Fields, is he the tallest? No, he's not. But Drew Brees wasn't the tallest. Is he the fastest? No, he's not. But he's still up there when it comes to quickness and agility. Like you said, sit back and watch Justin Fields' highlights. The kid can play ball. But the problem is he didn't have the weapons. He didn't have the weapons. And you know what I'm saying? I, and I agree with you on that. Like, but like when when you look at the the people that the Bears had placed their time on and signed long extension contracts, when you look at Jay Cutler, when you look at Trubisky, when you look at Rex Grossman, like to me, in my opinion, based off highlights for highlights, Justice Fields is better than them. Oh, hands down, bro. The only one who's even close, even close to him is Jay Cutler because you had Trubisky who, again, another example, uh, and again, like I said, as much as we love the Bears, they do some disappointing things. You bring Trubisky in and Fields is hands down better than Trubisky coming into the league and still now, look, at Trubisky went to the Steelers and was a bust over there. So it's like, are the, are the Steelers just picking up the Bears? Bears is bust, and that's wow. what's going to be there. <laughs> is that's what's going to be the trend now? But, it, it, but it's not the player's fault. I truly believe that even Trubisky could have been a better quarterback than what he turned out to be. But again, you have another example. They didn't give him an O line. They didn't give him many weapons. Jay Cutler, I think, was out of out of all everybody you just said was the most consistent because he was tough. I don't care what nobody said. Jay Cutler was tough. And he would get hit and he would get right back up with the same attitude in that same chip on his shoulder, play after play after play. But you you can't have a quarterback. There are very few quarterbacks 
in the NFL, and most of them can't do it, where you have little to no weapons, especially as a rookie or a sophomore or even getting into early veteran years, where they're going to give you an actual shot for a championship. Because that's what every organization wants, is a championship. But it's football. It's a team effort. The, the, the only ones that have been able to do it in our lifetime have been a Tom Brady or a Peyton Manning or a Drew Brees, where they had one, maybe two elite weapons in their backfield or at the receiver position, and they actually be able to to take the championship. Most quarterbacks are not going to do that. I agree. I, I totally agree. So look, let me ask you this. So if if Phil's so he he's over there with Pittsburgh now. Do do you think him coming off the bench is going to make him better by learning from Russell Wilson? I would give you that and say yes. I do. Here's the thing: Russell Wilson needs to he needs to hang his hat up as a player. But Russell Wilson, I actually I did like him when he played in Seattle. The man can ball in his prime years. The man can ball. I mean, this is a Super Bowl winning quarterback here that we're talking about. But I think Russell Wilson is at the a point of his career where he needs to hang his hat up as a player, go chill out with Sierra for a couple of years and come back as a coach. <laughs> because he or he's a true leader. He really is a true leader. And I think that if if done right, Justin Fields can learn a lot from Russell Wilson. The man's been in the league for a long time and he does have a lot to offer. And he has sat under some some amazing coaches and staff. So there there there's a lot to learn from that man. That's what so I'm I mean and and that too like I, I think with Justin Fields for him to exceed greatness, he probably do need that mentorship, someone that's gonna show him the ropes and show him the way because the experience with the Bears Oh, of course, you know what I'm saying. You um, it didn't turn out too great, but like, can, can you see? Because of, of course, Russell Wilson is the starting quarterback. Do Do you think that somewhere down the line during next season that you could see Justin Fields starting over Russell Wilson? I can. I can see that uh, maybe less closer to the second half of the season um, if Russell Wilson has another kind of bust season as he did in Denver. I can see the Justin Fields, you know, hype start to build in Pittsburgh where they're like, okay, we got this kid who put up, you know, a couple thousand passing yards every season for Chicago. He's just sitting on the bench. Why don't we give him a shot? So if Russell Wilson is turns out to put up another let's call it a disaster of a season like he did in Denver his last year in Denver I could see Justin Fields especially if there's no shot of them making the playoffs because the Steelers being in the AFC North in my opinion the AFC North is the toughest division in the NFL right now um, if they have no legitimate shot of the playoffs I could definitely see uh, Justin Fields starting closer to the end of the season. That's what's or if, up. If Russell Wilson gets injured. Yeah. Mean, or if Russell Wilson gets injured. If Russell Wilson gets injured, that's Justin Fields' team all day long. That's right. I, I definitely agree. And, I mean, I never really, like, to be honest with you, I never really paid attention to the Pittsburgh Steelers. Is their offensive line better than the Bears? I would give their offensive line uh, a step up above the Bears as of last year. Now, the Bears have made some interesting offensive moves this year, which is why the Justin Fields trade is so disappointing is because they have finally, the Bears were finally making moves in the offseason to build a team around Justin Fields. So, and you, these these aren't just these aren't rookie guys. These are guys who have been in the league for a long time. I don't mean to call it a rant right now, but the yeah. trade itself is disappointing, bro. Yeah. Because what I see the Bears is, and you have to look at the type of contracts 
that the Bears have signed from the offensive line that they brought in to Keenan Allen was the biggest contract that they gave. Uh, they gave a decent sized contract to, to DeAndre Swift, which I like, but they're bringing in offensive weapons and they're giving them one, two, four year contracts. And in my eyes, that's, that's looking like, okay, the Bears are trying to bring in weapons to see who's going to gel into the system. And if they don't gel into the system, well, we won't sign them for a one-year contract, so we can go ahead and part ways after that. But, hey, if they do gel into the system and if they do well, we can re-sign them for an extended contract, but at least they're not hung up. So I really did see the Bears making some smart moves in the offseason preparing for the draft because we remember we got a first and a ninth round pick so but to answer your question directly bro my bad i know i went no <laughs> I no it's cool it's cool it's cool <laughs> <laughs> it was um it, it, i do see the steelers having a little bit better offensive line than the um than the bears but they're in a tough division and you get you need a you need a big uh, solid offensive line in that division so look, so um, depending on the um the draft, in your opinion, um, you know what I'm saying, just based on your, your opinion, do you think the Bears got what it take to win that division? That's a tough one, and th- that is a tough one. Being and I Detroit think is gonna, you have Detroit, and there we go, right there. Detroit had played a phenomenal season last year in at a history making year. And they repeat it by at least bare minimum getting back to the NFC championship. Can they do that? Okay, that's that's the first question. But then you have the Green Bay Packers, who the Minnesota Vikings, let's put them at third, maybe you know, third at best in the division, fourth, because they just gave away their supposed what was supposed to be their franchise quarterback in Kirk Cousins. So they're realistically they're in a rebuilding year in themselves. So we got to see who's going to step up. Um, but then you have the Green Bay Packers. The Green Bay Packers have never been a pushover. And then you have, uh, 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 what's his name, Love, at quarterback in the Green Bay Packers. But then you also, like I said, you have the Detroit Lions who made it to the NFC Championship last year. So can they may, can they take the division? I think they can, depending on who they take in the draft. But and who they have step up as their starting quarterback. Um, but I do think it's going to be very difficult because of the components that they have with bringing in different veteran uh, players that have been leaders on other teams. Who is going to step up and be the leader at the Chicago Bears. It was disappointing to not see Justin Fields step up to be the leader, but to take the division, you cannot just have good players. You have to have good leadership there. And the fact that they keep going, they got a new GM, they got a new offensive coordinator, the fact that they keep going back and forth, you know, they got a new head coach, because let's be real, he was, he's only in his second year, two years ago, he was with Indianapolis as their defensive coordinator. So it's a, it's a new team and you need a leader to step up both at the coach level, at the player level, and grab that organization by the horns and say, let's go for it to actually take the division. Uh, you know, I, I agree. Um, so, look, j- just just a, um, j- just a quick prediction. If everything goes the Bears' ways and everything goes the Steelers' ways as planned, how many games, if all healthy, how many games you got the Bears winning and how many games you got the Steelers winning? Oh, that's a good one, bro. That's a good question right there. Yeah. I, I would I would give the I would give the Bears if they gel correctly, I would give them ten or eleven wins. Wow. Nine at nine at the least. If they gel correctly, because and I say that because of the weapons that they have coming in in Keenan Allen and DeAndre Swift. So Keenan Allen's performance, one, he's an all pro wide receiver. He's your he's going to be your number one receiver in there. Plus you have DJ Moore. So you have a threat at the receiver position. But the big question right now, as we stand is 
who's going to be throwing the ball to them. So if Keenan Allen can put up another Pro Bowl year in Chicago, absolutely, I can see it. If DeAndre Swift can produce coming out of the backfield, because he produced in Philly last year, but Philly had a much better line than the Chicago Bears do. So we'll see how he plays out in the backfield. As far as the Steelers go, I'm a little bit biased when I come to the wins of the Steelers uh, because I'm a Ravens fan at the end uh-huh. of the day. <laughs> but I, I don't the, – the Steelers were not impressive last year. I think whether they won, they won uh, nine or ten games, I would give them about that because the Browns nor the Bengals – are that impre- were that impressive last year, and then coming into this year, the Bengals getting rid of Joe Mixon to start the 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 off season uh, free agent season off. It's 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 a tough one. It's it's definitely a tough one. But I'd give them I'd give them eight or nine wins, being right about five hundred. So do you, uh, so what, you think the Bears was going to have a better season than the Steelers? I do. I do see the Bears having a better season than the Steelers. Wow. That's that's crazy, man. Once again, like when I got the news of the field situation, that definitely messed up my whole day. I ain't even gonna lie. It did. It was it was a gut shot again. Um it's it's a disappointing move, but the Bears do disappointing things. That's just that's what the Bears do. It's it's not a shock if, if like we've been a Bears fan for for decades on decades, and they keep doing disappointing things. Um, so we're it, it's I'm interested to see what they're gonna do with the number one pick. In my opinion, because I think I think with. The getting rid of Justin Fields and trading him to the Steelers, that it, a lot of people are saying that that automatically means that Caleb Williams is going to come to Chicago. Now, with him, with Justin Fields, now if, if the Bears would have came out and said, oh, no, Justin Fields is our starting quarterback, then I would say, no, they're definitely not taking Caleb Williams in, as the first overall pick. But for them to make that move, to get rid of their starting quarterback and open that position up um, and, and have the hype around Caleb Williams as it is, I could see them drafting him. However, in my opinion, I don't think the Bears should draft Caleb Williams. He has been a phenomenal college quarterback. He's had a great year, uh, uh, career at the college level. But what a lot of people are not talking about, um, and we could talk about it here, is Caleb Williams' dad. Mr. Williams, when you draft Caleb Williams, you're not just drafting Caleb Williams because his dad is his manager. Wow. And and this kid, I don't know if a lot of people know, he's already a millionaire. Wow. Caleb Williams is already a millionaire based off of endorsements. And so for him to come into the NFL, you are not... Don't get me wrong. I could be 100% wrong, and and, and and props to Caleb Williams if I am wrong about him, and I'm okay with him coming into Chicago if that's what the Bears choose to do and him having a phenomenal season because at the end of the day, I'm a Bears fan. But if you draft him and he comes in and you bring daddy in, because his dad is his manager, and everybody's kid thinks they're the greatest thing since sliced bread. But yeah. there have been rumors about Caleb Williams kind of getting uh, big chested coming into meetings. One, he didn't throw out the combine, which I think was a mistake. Um, it, it, it shows that he's not humble. Because if you're humble, you're going to come participate with everybody else. If you're not humble, you're saying, I don't need to show y'all nothing. I showed y'all everything that I've had the last couple of years. So you have a kid coming in the draft that's potentially not hungry because he's already made his money. You got a kid coming into the draft with a big head because his dad has hyped him up to be the best thing since NFL. the NFL was founded. Yeah. You know, so you're, you're getting a lot of baggage 
when you get Caleb Williams and there have been rumors that, and I think it's laughable that there have been rumors that his dad is saying, Oh, can you offer my son ownership stake in your organization as a point of contract? And the NFL doesn't do that. They don't do that for anybody. It doesn't matter how hyped you are in college, how many college quarterbacks have come out of college ball into the NFL and they were they were top rank they won the national championship and they were an absolute bust yeah. in the NFL we, wow. we see it time and time again so you're 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 taking a big chance and a big risk if the Bears were to draft Caleb Williams, do I see it happening? I could definitely see it happen, especially after them getting rid of Justin Fields. Do I personally think it's the best move? No, I don't. But Chicago kind of already played their hand when they said, hey, we're getting rid of Justin Fields. And now they are they don't have a starting quarterback as of right now. So it kind of leaves it up to assumption that they're going to draft Caleb Williams in the first round. Wow. So I mean, if if you was the GM, and if you was to have kept Justin Fields, what would you? Who would you draft at number one, or would you would have traded it to get um more pieces to help Justin Fields? I would have drafted. If it was one hundred percent my choice, I would have kept Justin Fields, and I would have drafted Marvin Harrison Jr. Yeah. Think about that. Think about that receiving core in Keenan Allen. DJ Moore and Marvin Harrison Jr., who is a generational wide receiver. We forget who his dad is <laughs> and wow. how much has been poured into that kid. It's it's to have a three pack punch at the receiver position and Justin Fields at the quarterback and DeAndre Swift at the running back. The Bears could have potentially had an elite offense. Wow. But now they- now we will just have to wait and see. Man, so like, of course, okay, the the um, uh, because it's it's quite a few quarterbacks in the in the draft that the Bears could choose from besides Caleb Williams, but a lot of people always talk about that number one pick, but the Bears do have a ninth pick. With that ninth pick, what do you think the Bears should do? Should they trade that pick to get more pieces, established pieces, or? Who in the draft do you think would be available for the Bears that that, that you think would be helpful for them to get? It's really tough to say who would be available because I, I think the NFL right now is such is is a is a game and a business of shocking right now because it's like oh my god this team has done this oh my god this team has done this and even in the season you watch the games in the season it's like oh my god this team did this this team did this but I think the Bears need to continue to solidify that offensive line that that is the Bears number one goal the Bears need to get a solid offensive line the Bears have never had a solid offensive line so I can't recall who's actually coming up as, as a top offensive lineman into the draft of this year, but you, it, whatever happens at that number one pick, if they keep it, let it happen. Keep the ninth pick. I don't think they should get rid of either one of their picks unless they pull out a trade out of their back pocket before the draft. That's just absolute gold. But I can't trust the Bears to do that, given the fact that they just gave up their starting quarterback, who's a good quarterback, in my opinion. Not a great quarterback yet, but a good quarterback with a a ton of potential for a sixth-round draft pick. Like, that's just total trash. Um, So I don't think the Bears should give up either one of their picks. I think they need to hold their pick because it's very rare that any team has this opportunity where you have the number one overall pick and you have another pick in the first round of the NFL draft. Uh, you know what? I well with that ninth pick, um, do, do is there a position that you think the Bears should should be banking on uh, with the ninth pick, or should they just take whoever's great uh, that's available in that draft by then? 
Uh, I think it's going to come down to the the second part of that, bro, is who's still left on the board and what do the Bears need? Because the Bears, again, the Bears have a decent defense. They can get it done with the defense that they have. They can make a legitimate run for the division with the defense that they have. Um, they need more offensive weapons. They need a better offensive line. They brought in, I think, two or three offensive linemen already um, and not some rookie pushover, some guys who have some good experience in the league. But if you have that and then you bring in a rookie offensive lineman who can perform Form and gel well with the team and fall into the system gets you the best offensive lineman that's still on the board. Yeah. So that you, you know what? Hey, and and that's definitely dope that you know what I'm saying, like that the Bears do have the first and ninth pick because to have the Bears since I've been focused on football, I've never really seen the Bears have the two top ten picks. No. Very rare, very rare, bro. Yeah. So, so, I mean, but to sum it all up, to wrap everything up, if you was to grade your prediction, to grade the season for the Bears, you you think that it, what you would give them a, what a C plus at the end? Do do you think they're gonna you, and they will win more games than they won last year? Is correct? I do believe that. Yes. And what 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 was the Steelers' record last year? Let me look that up real quick, bro. I want to say the Steelers are just above 500 last year. Yeah, so I mean, the Steelers were 10 and 7. Oh, ten. So yeah. do, you, do you think they'll be doing better or worse? I think a lot of it is going to come down to Russell Wilson and how he plays because I honestly thought that Russell Wilson was going to do better than he performed in Denver. Um, so I think that's gonna a lot of it's gonna have to do with Russell Wilson. I can see them still being at that five, roughly that five hundred level where they're winning nine and ten games. Um, but it's extremely difficult to win nine or ten games in the AFC, let alone the AFC North and still make the playoffs. So to classify a better season, a lot, I, I'm, I'm going to put, I'm going to hang that hook on Russell Wilson. I can see it happening, but a lot of it is going to depend on how Russell Wilson plays. And if Russell Wilson turns out to be an absolute bust, like he was his last year in Denver, I do not see the Steelers having a better year than they did last year. Wow. So, hey, let me ask you this question. So was Phil's being, and this is the last question before you wrap it up. Since Phil is officially a Steelers, will I be seeing you with a, a Phil Steelers jersey? You will not, bro. You will. I'm, 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 <laughs> you, I am not. You got to remember, bro. I'm a Ravens fan. You will yeah. never see me in yellow anything, my guy. <laughs> hey, no. I, I, I was just <laughs> asking because, like, nation all day, bro. <laughs> hey, hey. But well, hold on. And look, let me ask you this. So, like, when when people look at um, the NFL team that represent America or America's favorite team. Who who would you say got that um position? The Cowboys or the Steelers? Bro, it's never it ain't been the Cowboys since the nineties, bro. <laughs> since the nineties. Hey, that's I, I thought I would, so. I wouldn't give it to the Steelers right now either. If you were to put a if you were to put a, t- a team as America's team right now, it's Kansas City. Has, I'm giving it to Kansas City. You know, yeah. and I like Andy Reid. I liked him um, in in Philadelphia when he was there. Um, but since the since the Chiefs beat the Ravens last year, I don't like him that much no more. <laughs> <laughs> Man, hey. Man, boss, it's definitely an honor to have you on the show. Thanks for stopping through to chop it up with me. I appreciate you, bro. I appreciate you for having me on the show. It's always good. Oh, yeah, no doubt, no doubt, boss. Let's get it. Yeah. For sure. For sure.